Hello everyone, this is Jason Edelman. Today we're going to take a quick look at leveraging Ansible for networking. I've written quite a bit about Ansible, giving some basic examples on Ansible itself and some different things other folks are doing in the community around, um, around Ansible. So here, you know, I, want to, I want to demo some, some pre-built uh, custom modules um, in Ansible that I've created to help automate changes going forward on uh, Cisco networking devices. Now here, uh, we have a small network set up, three routers, R1, R2, R3. There's some basic configuration on there left over from prior runs of this playbook, but you can see here the host name is router one, uh, host name is router two, host name is router three. There's some other SNMP settings on here. You know, we can take a quick look at before we execute the playbook. But, you know, let's get into the router first. And if we look at, uh, let's just take a look at and your read only community strings. So we can see there's two community strings, and this will be important as we go through the playbook. But just take note of that, and we'll come back to it later. So if we dive into the Ansible components here, first we have a host file. And as I've written about in the past, these are the hosts divided up into groups, however you want to divide them up. Here, this is one basic group of the three routers that I just showed, 10.1.1.110, and 120 and 130. And these are all put into the group called routers right here. Now, if we look at our main Ansible playbook, that's titled netengbff.yaml. Again, hopefully tools like this become network engineers' best friends and then everyone can live happily ever after, okay? All right, but you know, on, on a serious note, here we have a single playbook uh, with a single play with six tasks. Each task is manipulating a certain change on each of these network devices. And if we go top down, these are pretty self-explanatory. We're going to be ensuring the host name is, is you know, a certain, uh, defined parameter, a certain configuration, right? And so that, you know, this should really say ensure across the board because, you know, one key point that I want to make here is in these custom modules and the, and the module name is host name here, the module name is enable secret and SNFP contact. These modules will not make a change to the device and they will not execute commands if the device is already in the desired state. So if the desired state has the host name equal to X and it already is X, the change will not be issued. So I should say that's the majority of them. Here, for example, enable secret, you may not be able to read the MD5 hash and then decipher what that is. So for our case here today, enable secret is actually being issued every time. Or the other ones that are smart enough to go, you know, to go and gather the configuration, analyze it, and only make the change if the device is not in the desired state that we want want that to be in. So you know we can look here in, in some of these uh, some of these modules. For example, if we look at update SNFP contact, com SNFP contact is the module, and we're sending SNFP contact two key value pairs. The first key value pair is contact, and then my name. So contact is the key. Jason Edelman is the value, and then device inventory host name. Is the second key value pair. Now, one important point to remember is inventory hostname is an Ansible uh, pre-built variable, or you know, built into this uh, system itself. Where inventory hostname is the name of the host coming from the host file. So here, the inventory hostname is just the IP address during each run here, and we're pulling in the IPs from the hostname here. If it was a name, then it would be a name, right? But one other key point here. Hostname equals new hostname. This is also a key value pair, but new hostname is a variable, and these are stored in the host variable files within Ansible. So, as a quick look, taking a look at, look at router one at 10.1.1.110 has a single variable called new hostname, and this is this is what we want the new hostname of router one to be. Okay. And, and R2 and R3 have similar files as well to have their host specific variables where everything else is a standard. 
So if you consider this as three routers on, on you know, across the WAN, we want everything to be the same, you know, except the host name. So if we dive into the playbook here, we can execute the playbook, Ansible dash playbook, we call the playbook name, and then we're going to include the minus V to see the detailed output and messages being returned uh, back to us during execution. So each each task takes roughly five to six seconds because again, I'm using one PK in the back end and one PK uh, just takes longer than you know I would like to connect to the device. You know, if it was NetConf, something like that, that's, that's stateless and that, that would be a lot quicker to connect to a device. What we can see here, host names are being changed. So something is being changed whenever this is in this yellow amber color, right? So we can see the new host name of the device. We can look at contact and location. These are green. So we can see here these changed or false. So nothing is being changed here. And I'm returning the message, no change required, already set. So we're not trying to execute a change on the device if it's already in the desired state. That's a very important piece to, to understand about Ansible. So again, read-only strings, rewrite strings, all of these are already in the desired states. All right, so we can look at two changed, um, overall six okay. And the two that changed were host names and enable secret. And if we want for kick, just to prove it out, we had router one here, press enter, you know, we see, uh, we see the new host name there. But if we do a show run pipe include read only, we see those two community strings that were there previously. So if we look at read only as an example, let's create, uh, let's create a new read only string, let's call it Ansible, and remove existing. Let's say we have the option now to remove the existing. So let's say remove the existing, yes. Let's save that file, it's the only change we're gonna make right now. Let's go back to execute the playbook, and that should be good. Let's execute it. And again, so each time this task is executed, it's going out simultaneously to connect to three devices at once. So again, from a scalability perspective, so we have three devices and it's taking about five seconds to connect to each one. It's about five seconds per task. And that's only because it's 1PK in the back end. If it was something else, this would likely be even quicker than it is. But you know, we're making six changes times three devices, about 18 changes in about 45 seconds, which is still pretty, you know, pretty darn good. So we're back to the read-only community strings here. I'll give it a few seconds here. And it's actually returning the existing that were already there. But we can see in our message here, remove the existing entries and then added new entry, right? So if we go back to the device, to router one, The nice thing here is we remove the previous ones. We have the new community string uh, called Ansible for, uh, for read-only uh, interactions to the device. And we can do the same thing with read-write. We can do remove existing, yes or no, um, add the strings here, right? So yeah, the goal here was to show what can be done with uh, networking with a with an open source, uh, flexible and scalable platform. And you know, these are you know six very small uh, custom modules, and but you know modules can be built for just about anything, using any API in the back end as well. So hopefully this uh, this helps uh, show what's possible with Ansible, and until next time.